Okay, so I guess I ran out of storage. This is only like three minutes I can record on this. Oh my god. I need to get clean out my storage. Okay, um. Okay, let's see. Theoretically, Kundalini produces a force that helps open the crown chakra located at the top of the head because blocks in the chakras may trap our spinal energy. This chakra... Let me see. Hold on, I want to read from here. Kundalini does produce a profound state of consciousness. And this resulting state of consciousness may make it very difficult to get along in a world so predominantly unenlightened. It may, in quotations, it may not support our current paradigm or be harmonious to the circumstances in our lives or the physical state of purity within the body. These discrepancies may make for a great deal of discomfort, but are not always to be avoided. Kundalini is basically a healing force, and pain is felt through is felt only when it encounters tension and impurities we are not quite ready to release. I'm gonna read that again. It may not support our current paradigm or be harmonious to the circumstances in our lives or the physical state of purity within the body. These discrepancies may make a great deal of discomfort, but are not always to be avoided. Kundalini is basically a healing force, and the pain is felt only when it encounters tension and impurities we are not quite ready to release. Learning to open the chakras allows a clear path for the kundalini that is less apt to be painful. Theoretically, kundalini produces a force that helps open the crown chakra located at the top of the head because blocks in the chakras... Um, may trap our spinal energy, this chakra is often the hardest to reach. Classically, the crown chakra is considered the seat of enlightenment. However, I believe that it is combined presence and connection of all the chakras together give conscious attention that brings enlightenment. With many people, their more enlightening moments come from bringing upper chakra consciousness down to tangible recognition rather than the other way around. The raising of energy to higher chakras occurs naturally and spontaneously when we relax deeply and pay attention to all of our chakras. Attempts to force the energy to rise often results in strain, tension, and a feeling of being spaced out or irritable to all around us who are not doing the same thing. The latter produces an alienation that I have found to be systematic, symptomatic of lack of enlightenment. Many people have come up, with, up to me at conferences too excitedly to tell me of their enlightened seventh chakra experiences while not having the slightest sensitivity to, fe to the fact that they were really interrupting a conversation or were living in bodies that seemed horribly neglected. It is impossible to talk about chakras without mentioning kundalini. However, the raising of kundalini is not the focus of this book. Kundalini is not necessarily the best or easiest way to achieve realization any more than driving through a stone wall is the easiest way to get to the house on the next street. There are times...